Character animations make a crowd sim come alive. Although we'll start with a simple walking animation in this video, I will be providing a few animations to go along with my character generator HDA for perk members. You can use these assets to practice what you learn from this video and create some interesting animations. This way you can add a bit more variety to your scene as you're learning. Basic concept number two, character state animation. Taking the project from the previous video and replace these blue agents for actual characters. Let's go into the .NET. When I play this scene, you can see this explosion happening. This is happening with such an explosion because we don't have a crowd state or we don't even have a crowd um, animation attached to our agents. So this is not even a real character mesh. So that's one of the first things we want to do first. Let's add a very simple character mesh to a character rig to this. Houdini comes built in with some character rigs that for us to work with. If you click this tab over here, you'll be brought with all these different character rigs. The last three mocap icons come with animation. The first three character rigs do not come with animation. So they don't. So the one that we're going to use today is this mocap uh, mocap biped one. So I'm just going to click this and it'll create a mocap biped one in our object level. So this will only create it on the highest stop level, which is the object contact. And I'm just going to play it. And it comes with this walking animation by default. We can choose different types of animation. It has a run, has a wait, has a standing. So this is, uh, I'll explain why this is um, swing the feet around in just a bit. This is zombie. This is rest. So this is not doing anything. This is usually what we call the t-pose and this is used for retargeting animation but we're not going to focus on that today we're going to focus on the walk animation what i want to show you is this in place animation option so let's uncheck this and you can see our, our rig has moved you can see the rig is walking around the scene his position has changed he's no longer walking in place if we run it he's actually running in the world space. Enable the in-place animation. He's gonna run in place. This is what is preferred in the crowd simulation because the crowd solver will handle the, the position of the character. The crowd solver will move the character for us. So we don't want the animation to affect it at all. Now, for the standing animation, why is the feet moving around? So you can see, if you look closely, you can see that the feet are floating, sorry, sliding on the floor. Now let's uncheck or disable the in-place animation. Let's do it again. This is, the feet aren't moving. They're, they're pinned down. So the in-place animation, I suspect, is using the hip as a control bone. So usually when you have a character rig, you have one bone controls the position of the entire rig. So it's sort of like your root bone or your main control bone. And all the bones are a children of this main bone. Like this main bone is the parent of everything. So when you move this root bone, the entire character moves. Regardless, it just offsets the position. My guess, because this rig is a very simple rig, it doesn't really have a root bone. It has a hip bone though. In place animation option is using the hip bone to offset. If you tell the hip bone to stay in one place, everything else, all the limbs will be offset and you're going to end up like this, a feet swing. The hip is not moving. It's always in place. The feet are being offset from the hip. So I would suggest to maybe disable this for the crowd simulation, just for the standing animation. But we're not going to be using the standing animation. We're going to be using the walking animation. And it's going to be in place animation as well. Okay, let's go into our crowd solver. Now let's replace all these default um, objects with our crowd agent. Now let's drop down an agent. And what this will do is that it'll bring that character. So you can notice that character rig that we placed is in this object level. Well, we that's not very useful for us. We need it inside our geometry node, inside our crowd setup. So this agent node will import that character rig in here, 
into this contact. Now it's important that you know the input is a character rig because Houdini has set it up like this. Now usually it wouldn't be a character rig if you're bringing in your own character created in Kinefx, which I'll show you in a later video how to do. Or if you bought a character rig, bought it online, it would probably come in an FBX. So you wouldn't use character rig. Or if you got something from Mixamo, it would not be this character rig. It would probably be an FBX here. I wouldn't use the agent node to import other character rigs that I bought online or downloaded online. There's a better way of doing this. I only use the agent node to import the built-in character rigs that Houdini comes with. Click this button over here. Let's choose that mocap biped one. Before I do that, I want to rename it. Call this person walking. Okay, let's go back there. Let's do that again. Now let's choose this person walking. And you can see that we get our character in here. Play it, he's walking. Let's hook it up to the crowdsource. That's how easy it is to get the default Houdini character rigs into your animation, into your crowd solver. However, if we go into crowd solver, into our .NET, things will start to not make sense. So let's come in here and let's play it. Well, for one thing, they're not walking. They're just like, they're doing the exact same thing as it was before, except the mesh is different because now we actually have a character mesh. And also the size is different too. The size is wrong. We put the render flag on the crowdsource. This is the size that we're, that it's supposed to be. But when we put in the dot net, it, it goes like this. We can change the size of these characters, but that's not the reason why looking like this. But let me show you in the crowdsource how to change the um, size. The initial size is over here. So you can actually change the size. But that's still not the reason why it's acting so weird in the dump. This, it's not showing us the right size because there's no state. Then we do have a state. We have a walking animation. However, you have to tell Houdini about that state. Now let's look at some of the inputs of the crowd solver. Now the first input is for the crowd object. So that's just this guy over here, this crowd object. This instantiates all the agents into the crowd simulation. So without this, we're not going to see agent. This represents the agents. The second input is the crowd source. Crowd source is sort of the pop source or like the pyro source. You you have you need a source that keeps feeding in more smoke into the pyro simulation or in in a pop net. If you have a pop source, then it'll constantly feed in more particles. Well, in the crowd solver, the crowd source will just constantly feed in more agents. I mean, it, it seems a little silly right now, but you may have, no one says your crowd agents must be people. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be like different kinds of uh, character rigs. So the third input is the states. And that's what we're missing right here. We don't have the walking state hooked up to the crowd solver. So Houdini doesn't really know about the walking state. So the fourth input is the transitions. So that's when you have multiple animations hooked up. We come up here into this person's, we can see that it has many different animations available. But how do we attach all these different animations to a single agent? Well, I'm going to show you that a little later, but that's where the transition comes in. If you want the character to transition from a walking to a running state, uh, you have a crowd of agents walking towards the bus stop. The bus pulls in and everyone starts running towards it. Once they get close enough to the bus, they may start standing around or, um, sorry, waiting around. So let's start off with attaching a crowd state. Let's drop down a crowd state. And let's hook that up to the states. Okay, instantly they're back to the normal size. So let me disconnect this. They were, for some reason, it doesn't pick up the bright sizing. Like if we go to the crowd source, put the render flag here, the the size that we specified, if we put the render flag on the .NET, they lose all that information. For some reason, they're trying to find the crowd state, at least the initial state, and they can't find it until you hook up the crowd state and it'll actually pick up the right size. This is actually not the right state too. Um, where I'm going to show you how to configure this, but let's play it as is so nothing is happening. That's because the crowd state is not set up correctly. Now the crowd state has a few variables that we need to set up to at least get the walking into the crowd solver, the state name and the clip name. The clip name is the animation name. The dollar sign OS is a Houdini expression that grabs the name of the node 
what is the name of this node? It's crowd state one. Well, that's not, it's not the walking animation. But how do we actually get the walking state name? Well, where was it set? Let's go back. If we go back to the agent, the clip name is actually set here, walk. That's the state name as well. So if we go to show you one more thing, crowdsource, the initial state, we can set the initial state. So as I said before, there could be multiple states attached to your character. In this case, we only have one. And if we click this, it's grabbing the walk. But what if I didn't want to call it walk? Where's this name coming from? Like some people might have walking or uh, walks towards, or I don't know, you walk one, walk two, walk three. There might be multiple walking animations. So how do you set this name? So let's go back to the agent and I'm going to call this I am walking. Go back to the source. Let's click this. It's picking up the I am walking. So that's where you set the name in the agent node. I'm going to change it back. Though. So let's go back to here and I'm just going to call it walk. Now let's go into the .NET. And how do we set it in here in the crowd state? Now we know what the state name is and we know what the clip name is. It's walk. Type in it. Walk. The clip name is wrong. So let's put walk and then let's play it. Oh, whoops, because I changed the animation to the standing state just as I was explaining something. I forgot to change it back. One second. Here, because this was stuck on uh, wait. So let's change it back to walk. And let's see. He's walking. Now let's go back into our agent. And let's play it. Now this is still not walking. That's another thing I want to show you. Agent here, the render flag here. Now, why isn't he walking? We've clearly changed it back to the right animation. You need to press this reload. There you go. This now will grab the right animation. For some reason, this doesn't update in real time. Now let's go back to our .NET. Let's try playing it one more time. Okay, so we have it correctly hooked up. We have walking agents. Perfect, right? Not exactly. I just want to show you one more thing before we move on. Now, as you recall, this wasn't called walk. It was called dollar sign OS. So let me change it back. Remember, it's grabbing the crowd state one name. So we really didn't have to type in walk here. It seems really redundant work. What we could have just did was just change the name of the node. Just call this walk. It's a little easier than changing both parameters. And let's play it. Okay, it works. So we just have to change the name of the node. We don't have to change the parameters. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.